Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Bobby Christine for a very special Outlaws of Thunder Junction episode. Each player has brought to the table a upgraded version of their favorite precon from the new set. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Tales of Adventure, Moxfield, and Ultimate Guard, but more on them later in the video. That's enough from us. Let's go ahead, meet the players, and check out these upgrades. Hello, everybody. My name is Bobby Christine, and we are out here with Top Deck Studios, Lobby Pristine, Magic Kids, and of course, Birds of Paradise. Today, I'm going to be playing Yuma, Proud Protector. I'm excited about this because it's landfall with a little bit of desert twists. And because it's landfall, I've included some upgrades in the form of Titania and Argoth. Hopefully, I shall be the first to meld on Decked Out. If that does not happen, I would simply love to fill the board with these cactus little buddies and have the cutest Kiri talented swing for the win. I'm Airball and today we're playing Stella Lee Wildcard. Again, I love the game plan of this deck so much. It's classic, is it? Cantrip, cantrip, big spell, and then copy that big spell with Stella for value. The only problem I had with the deck last time was that it was a little bit clunky. We needed better cantrips, which we added to the deck, and we also added some really good big payoffs to finish the game, like Electro Dominance and Empty the Warrens and Mind's Desire. I hope the rest of the table is ready. Howdy, partner. I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today I am playing Olivia Opulent Outlaw. I got to play this in our early access episode as well, and I loved the deck. It came out swinging, it was super aggressive, and the overall archetype is so much fun. It just needed a little bit of help closing out the game, so I used my budget on some end game haymakers. So now we shouldn't have a problem finishing this game out quickly. I'm Veggie Wagon, and your upgrades are my upgrades because I'm playing Gonti Kenny Acquisitor. Not only am I going to steal all of the upgraded cards that my opponents have included, but I've also added some better perks for hitting my opponents and some cards that care about me controlling their permanence. I've even added Tasha the Witch Queen, even though she doesn't have the right hat for this set. As someone who really enjoys brewing new decks, I don't know what I would do without Moxfield. It simply is the best deck building tool on the internet. Internet. And if you guys would like to support us, you can always check out all of our deck lists on Moxfield. We even have today's upgraded lists for you guys to check out right now. All right. Well, hey, let's see them. It's time to get into the game. Let's get along, little doggy. Thanks, Sammy. <laughs> right on cue. <Keel. laughs> That's a catchphrase. 17? Oh, 19. Whoa! Wow. Double 19, double 17. Okay. All right. Come on, That's veggie. good energy. Bo go. Here we go. Come on, Bobby. You can do it. <laughs> veggie. Veggie. 19 oh, again? Yeah. Oh. Double 19s. Cursed. Cursed. <sighs> Draw my card. Sure. I'll play a Dark Slick Shores and pass turn. All right. We're going to play a Mountain, and we're immediately going to cast Faithful Sluting. Draw two, discard two, flashback for three. Lootin'. Lootin' toot. Yeah, I don't like it, but I'm going to discard Expedite and Chaos Warp. Ooh. Wow. Ye of little faith. I have none. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> Turn one, Desert of the Fervent. That's my land. Uh, I could cycle this desert, but I shall not. It'll enter tapped, and I'll pass the turn. I'm going to start with a Battlefield Forge, and I'll pay one life for red. And we're going to play the Impulsive Pilfer. He's a 1-1 one, one that says when he dies, I get to create a treasure token, and it has Encore. Pass. All right, I'll play Swamp. I'll pay two for a Baleful Strix. Flying Death Touch, and I draw a card. Yeah, pass turn. Classic. Classic. Here's an island, and we'll pay two for a Thunderclap Drake. Two one flyer, instant sorcery cost me one less to cast. I can pay two in a blue and sacrifice it to copy the next instant sorcery spell I cast for each time I have cast my commander from the command zone this game. And I'll pass. Sometimes when I walk down the street, I thunderclap. I'll draw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play this forest and use my red mana to cast a magmatic insight as an additional cost to cast the magmatic insight. I think I'll go ahead and discard dunes of the dead. It says discard a land. And as I discard, uh, I'll draw two cards. One and two. Uh, there's nothing left to do with this one green. So after this all resolves, I'll pass to nerd Girl. Okay, I'm going to play a no bad outpost for my land for turn and, you know, veggie, yours is the scariest thing. So coming in for one. Yeah, I'm not making that trade. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't mind. <laughs> Pass. All right. I like this. Um, I'll play an exotic orchard and then I'll pay three 
for Grazalax, Illithid Scholar, a 3-2. Whenever a creature I control becomes blocked, I can return it to its owner's hand. And when one or more creatures I control deal combat damage to a player, I draw a card, which is kind of good. Grazalax plus Baleful Strix lets me swing out without any worries, build some card advantage, and is the ideal setup for when Gonti finally hits the board. Uh, Nerd Girl. No blocks. I'll draw a card. Pass the turn. We just got to kill Veggie already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, combat. Get thunderclap, Veggie. <laughs> I got the clap. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Why? What? I don't know. understand what you hear. Well, that sounds like it would burn. <laughs> like a firebrand archer. It's a 2-1. Whenever I cast a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. <laughs> And then I'll play this Is It Boiler Rooks as my land for turn, and I will bounce this mountain to my hand and pass. You got it. And whilst I may not have the clap this turn, I do in fact have a growth. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> I'm going to cast this Roiling Regrowth on the main phase. It's an instant, but I can follow my dreams. Uh, I must sacrifice the land as I cast this spell. I'll go ahead and sacrifice this forest, and then I can search my library for two basics and put them into play tapped. I'll go ahead and grab a planes in play tapped and the forest in play tapped and I will pass my turn. All right. Swamp for turn. I don't have a great a great thing for it though. Ugh. Hate it. We're going to play Captain Lannery Storm. Lannery Storm is a 2-2 with haste that says whenever it attacks, I get to create a treasure token. Whenever you sacrifice a treasure, Lannery Storm gets plus one plus oh until end of turn. And I don't want to lose my creature so unfortunately Bobby, I'm coming in for three. And when it attacks, I get to make a treasure and you'll take three damage. That'll do it. I'm coming for you next, Veggie. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go to combat. Um, I will send one at Nerd Girl in the air and three at Bobby. No blocks. Pass priority. Excellent. Move to damage. Take that damage. Ow, ow, ow. And I will draw two cards. I will play a forest as land for turn and then I'll play four for Savvy Trader. I just need more creatures on the board. It enters the battlefield and I could exile target permanent from my graveyard and play that for as long as it remains exile, but I don't have any. Uh, spells that I cast from anywhere other than my hand cost one less to cast. And then I'll pass turn. All right, I'll play this mountain for turn and then we'll pay three for my commander, Stella Lee, wild card. She's a two four and whenever I cast my second spell each turn, I get to exile the top card in my library and play it until the end of my next turn. And I can tap her to copy target instant or sorcery spell that I control if I have cast three spells already this turn. Then we'll pay one and we'll ponder. That's the uh, second spell for the turn. So Stella Lee is going to trigger and I will hit Octavia Living Thesis, which is a 10 drop. So that's probably not coming out anytime soon. Ponder says I can look at the top three cards in my library, put them back in any order, and then shuffle, and then draw. Because of uh, Firebrand Archer, everyone's going to take one point of damage. All right, Veggie, you're getting clapped for two in the air, and I'm going to send two over at Bobby as well. Beautiful. Ugh. No regrets. And that's the turn. On top of keep draw, my favorite thing about this turn that I have coming up is that I'm not going to think that hard about it. I'm going to play this land per turn. This uh, is a new desert. I could tap to add one mana of any type that a land I control produces, or I can pay three and turn it into an XX green plant with reach, where X is the greatest mana value amongst my commanders. After I put that land into play, I will cast Map the Frontier. Uh, this is search my library for two basic land cards and or deserts and put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. I'll grab two deserts from my deck, and we love a power crept explosive vegetation. Croissote Heath and Bristling Backwoods into play. You have six. I still have three. <laughs> this is not going well. I'm ramping. That basically means that I'm winning the game. Yeah. Um, and when that resolves, I have a lot of tap lands of which I will then pass the turn on over to Nerd Girl. But that's fine because we got a land. So I'm going to sack a treasure. So Captain will get a trigger and we're going to play my commander, Olivia Opulent Outlaw. A 3-3 three, three of flying and lifelink. This says whenever an outlaw I control deals combat damage to a player, I get to create a treasure token. I can also pay three, sack two treasures, and put two plus one plus one counters on each creature I control. Mm. This time, she has a hat. I think I'm willing to make the trade if Veggie wants it. So Captain Lannery Storm is coming to Veggie. It's a 3-2. And then my 1-1 one, one, Pilfer is coming to Bobby. Oh. 
And I will get a treasure token on uh, combat with the captain. Uh, yeah, this thing's not doing anything for me. I'll put it in the way. I have too many lands. I'll take that damage. All right. I will get an extra treasure when the pilferer connects. And this one will go away. And uh, I'm going to miss my land drop and pass the turn. I'm going to have faith in the deck. I'm going to do my stuff first. I'm going to play a Hinterland Harbor as my land for turn. Uh, I will pay two for a nature's lore to search for a forest and put that onto the battlefield. Kind of feel like you're stepping on my turf when you ramp. This town ain't big enough for two rampers. Mm. <laughs> turf. <laughs> <laughs> there is my forest. And then I'm going to pay four for this nature's will. Wow, what a good pre-con. Uh, it's an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, tap all lands that player controls and untap all lands you control. Ew. One of the struggles with this pre-con right out of the box is that it needs a lot of mana to be able to function. Great, you're stealing your opponent's cards, but you still have to pay mostly full price for them. And that's why I added Nature's Will, because that covers all of those problems right away. Let's go to combat. Bobby, <laughs> this Grazalax is for you. Airball, this Baleful Strix is for you. Yep, tapped out. So yeah, three, uh, or sorry, one and three. You got it. Untap and draw two cards. It's Gonti time. I'm going to pay five for Gonti Kenny Acquisitor. Spells I cast but don't own cost one less to cast. And whenever one of my creatures hits you, I look at the top card of your library and then I exile it. And I can play those cards as long as they remain exiled with mana of any color. Pass turn. That's like the best two, three, four, five curve I've seen in a game of Commander in a very <laughs> long time. <laughs> yeah, the, the, these precons are... Uh, Man, they don't make them like they used to or something. So, I mean, we're already just in a 3v1 scenario. Am I, am I getting that correctly? We are correct. I might need to hit you guys. <laughs> if, it's, if it's for the cause. If it's for the cause. It will be for the cause. <laughs> yeah, take some damage. Be a team player. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pay one and cast Preordain. Scry two, then draw a card. And everyone will take one off the Firebrand. We're going to put both of those on the bottom. We're going to pay three more for a Gutter Snipe. 2-2 two, two. every time I cast an incident or sorcery, deal 2 damage to each opponent. Uh, that's my second spell for the turn, so that will trigger Stella. We'll get to cast something until the end of my next turn. It's a mountain. And I'll play this island as my land for turn. Oh, suspicious. No, uh, what, what do you mean? I have no idea what you could possibly be talking about. I definitely didn't avoid playing that mountain for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm trying to decide whether it makes more sense to block Veggie's creature so he doesn't get value or just hit him so he dies. And I think the answer is hit him so he dies. Mm -hmm. We're going to send two in at you. And I think actually everyone else is going to stay home because I need your guys help to deal with this. <laughs> I'll take two. Pass. Mm -hmm. And Octavia is gone to exile. Show you the will of nature. Let's cast three spells because that's what I'm able to do. The first spell I will cast is a bitter reunion. When it enters the battlefield, I may discard a card. If I do, I will draw two cards. So let's discard the sand scout. I don't think it's doing too much for me now. And I'll draw two cards. And when that resolves, I would love to cast requisition raid. Uh, I could spree this spell for three total modes to either destroy an artifact, an enchantment, and put a counter on each of my creatures, but we're going to choose one spree mode. I will pay one, and we will simply destroy an enchantment. Thank God. Yeah, okay. that's enough of this. <laughs> There's no, I, this is not going to make it around, but <laughs> yeah, that's a good choice. It had to be done. We had to remove the nature's will. I like to think I've bought some goodwill with my other players at the table. Um, even though it's an instant, I don't want to, who cares? I'm going to cast it right now. Uh, I will cast Realms Uncharted and I'll pay three for that. Realms Uncharted says, search my library for four lands with different names, reveal them, an opponent chooses two of them, put the chosen cards into my grave and the rest into my hand. So I will choose four different lands here and someone gets to choose which go to my grave and which will go to my hand. Nerd girl. Yes. Between Argoth, Desert of the True, Ramunap Ruins, and Command Tower. Which two will go to my grave and which two will go to my hand? You can have these two. Oh my goodness gracious. 
These will go to your graveyard. You are so very <laughs> kind and considerate. These two deserts into my graveyard. I will put the command tower and the Argoth Sanctum into my hand. I have done my land per turn. I've casted my spells. I once again am completely tapped out, which is how you know that I'm playing Magic the Gathering. I'll pass the turn. <laughs> I'm going to play a Rankle Master of Pranks. A 3-3 with flying and haste. It is a rogue, so that's relevant. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, I can choose any number. Each player discards a card, each player loses a life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature. And I need some treasures. So Bobby is going to get the Pilferer, Olivia for commander damage to Veggie, and then Rankle to Airball, so I can maximize treasure generation. Stunning. Can't block. Yeah, my Firebrand Archer is a terrible shot. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I can't do anything. I'll take three. So a couple of things are going to happen. I will get a Rankle Trigger. I will get Olivia Trigger. I'll get three treasures from that because I hit three different opponents. That is sweet. And it'll be three, three, and one. Correct. Yes. Got it. Three, three, and one. And then the modes I will choose on Rankle. You know, fun for everyone. I'm going to choose all three modes. <laughs> all right. Everybody loses a life and, and draws. Everybody discards and everybody sacks a creature. All right. Forest. Mind's Desire. Ooh. Command Tower. Rough. All Best right. card in the game. Everybody lose a life and draw a card. Oof. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody sacrifice a creature. I'm going to get rid of the Pilferer, oh, man. which gives me a treasure. I think it's got to be the Baleful Strix. Archer. I'm so glad there's nothing on my board. And second main, hit a land. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Rankle. Let's go. Okay. Um, thankle, Rankle. Yeah, Thankle, <laughs> Rankle. I also gained three life from Olivia. I, <laughs> I am going to go ahead and just use two treasures to not waste this one mana because I don't want to. And we're going to play Bandit's Hall. This is a really cool artifact. I like it. It says, whenever you commit a crime, I get to put a loot counter onto the hall. Uh, and committing a crime is anytime I touch an opponent, a permanent, or their graveyard that is considered a crime. It can tap for a mana, and I can also remove counters from it to draw. Something about Bandit's Hall just makes me so happy. Every single time I touch my opponent's stuff, I'm committing a crime, and I get to score loot? This is awesome. And, uh, and that'll do it. I'll pass my turn. I'll play a Drown Catacomb for turn, uh, and then I'm going to pay two for Dothy Voidwalker. 3-2 with Shadow. Uh, if a card will be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a Void Counter, and then I can tap and sacrifice the Voidwalker to choose one of those cards and play it for free. Oh, that's interesting with the Rankle. Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't think I can tolerate that. Yes! So I'm going to pay one for a discounted Arcane Denial. Counter target spell. This controller can drop two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, and I draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. That's going to trigger a Gutter Snipe. So Ooh. everyone takes two. No. No. All right. It is countered. <laughs> Take that Dothy Voidwalker. I hate that card. <laughs> <laughs> I will go to combat. I will send three at Bobby and five at Nerd Girl. Oh, no blocks for me. There we go. And I will draw two cards. Veggie's drawing too many cards. Yeah, I don't know why I wouldn't just do this. I'm going to pay four for Arcane Heist. You may cast target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If it will be put into their graveyard, exile instead, and it has Cypher. So I can uh, put this on a creature, and when it hits, I get to cast it again. So uh, I would like to cast that Mind's Desire. No. Yeah. Uh, Your graveyard, Airball? Yeah. Well, hopefully it does for you what it always does for me and clears the lands off the top of my deck. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffle your library, then remove the top card of your library from the game. Until end of turn, you can play it as though it were in your hand without paying its mana cost, and it has Storm, so you copy it for every spell played before it this turn. Well, well, Storm count is two, so I play the Dothy and the Arcane Heist, and then I'll get one copy of the original. So, I'm going to shuffle. Can you give me a cut, please? All right, top card is a Fallen Shinobi. Bobby, can you give me a cut? I will cut that deck out. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, that's a Demir Aqueduct. And Nerd Girl, can you cut me? 
I mean, I might if you keep this up. <laughs> uh, hey, look, and a temple to see. See, it worked out great for everybody. I'll cast this Fallen Shinobi. Uh, a 5-4, when it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top two cards of their library, and until end of turn, I can play those for free. I'll pass the turn. All right, on my upkeep, even though it felt like forever ago, I did cast an Arcane Denial, so Veggie, you're going to get to draw two cards and I'll get in to draw an additional one. Yeah. Veggie, I'm not always sure what happens on your turns, but I know when your turn is over, I would like to do harm to you. That's That's... <laughs> All I can hope for. <laughs> I just want everybody to see that something is happening that is confusing. I'm having a great time doing whatever it is, and then I have to be removed from the game. We can't let Hedgy have a good time. Let's just <laughs> No, but I'm gonna have a good time because I'm gonna get to cast expressive iteration. Oh my gosh. All right. Look Lunch break. <laughs> Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, one on the bottom, one into exile, and you can play the card in exile this turn. So expressive iteration, uh, the cast will trigger gutter snipe. Everyone takes two. Don't. That one to the bottom and the exile is going to be this goblin electromancer. All right, we'll play this mountain from Stella and we'll pay two to cast the goblin electromancer. Incident sorcery spells I cast cost one less. So that's a total of two less for anyone who's counting. Uh, and the Stella Lee trigger, because that was my second spell for the turn. We are exiling a Fiery Inscription, which is an enchantment and does not get the benefit of any of my discounts. So that stinks. The Faithful Suiting in my graveyard does, though, so we're going to flash that back for another one red. We're going to draw two and discard two, and everyone's going to take two off the Gutter Snipe for that. Veggie's board state is really scary right now, but I think that might actually work to my benefit. Everyone at the table is going to be focused on him, and in the meantime, my pingers like Firebrand Archer are going to be slowly whittling away their life total, and they're going to wonder at the end of the game where it all went. My ranch is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you got that bitter union, though. <laughs> and Veggie's stuff is just a little too big to have to respect this board wipe, so I'm going to pitch this invasion of Karsis and an island to the Faithless Looting. And then as my last trick, we're going to pay one and cast Lock and Load. It has plot four, but I'm just gonna cast it for one because that seems better. Draw a card and then draw a card for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast this turn. And uh, that is going to trigger Gutter Snipe, so everyone please take an additional two. Ouch! And I'm gonna draw three off the Lock and Load. Yikes, I'm changing targets. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to combat, Veggie. You're going to get clapped, and Bobby, you can't defend yourself, so here's two. It is done. All right. Ah! And that's the turn. Okay. Oh, I have a better reunion in play. That scares me. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. Untap up, we draw. I'm going to pay three mana and cast my commander, Yuma, Proud Protector. Uh, Yuma costs three mana, and the reason for that is because there are five lands in my graveyard, so he costs five less to cast. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, I can sacrifice a land. If I do, I will draw a card, and when a desert is put into my graveyard, I'll make a 4-2 green plant warrior. ETB trigger. Let's do the thing. We'll do the thing. So I'm going to sacrifice on ETB this desert, this red tapped desert. When that desert goes to my graveyard, I would then create a 4-2 reach plant warrior token. And then I will draw a card. Um, let's go ahead and land per turn with Argoth, Sanctum of Nature. I have a green legend, so this will come to play untapped. I can also pay four and tap it. And if I do so, I will create a 2-2 bear and mill three cards. There's a lot more going on on the back of this card. Hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> Argoth has hit the board. We're halfway there. We're living on a prayer. All I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman. Hopefully not. <laughs> Uh, I will go ahead and cast the Spring Bloom Druid, and that's going to cost me one, two, three total mana. Uh, Spring Bloom Druid enters the battlefield. I'm going to sacrifice a land, and if I do, I'll search my river for two basics and put them onto the battlefield tapped. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this tapped desert that I've used. As this desert goes to the graveyard, I'm going to make another 4-2 plant. Bam! Board presence! I did it! Cool! <laughs> for my Spring Bloom Druid, I'll get a Mountain and a Plains. Do I just swing because my heart tells me to, or do I leave? I don't want to block with them. you got to follow these. your heart. What, do I want to block with them? Um, or at least listen to the All-American Rejects. <laughs> they would tell you to swing, swing. I'm going to swing, swing, swing at that gutter snipe, for it has crushed my heart many times. 
like a former love. Yeah. I'm gonna go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to pay one. I will sacrifice my bitter reunion and give all of my creatures haste until end of turn. With that done, um, let, let's go to combat. We're, sure. we're already there. Six, six, a four, two, a four, two at airball. Yuma has an attack trigger. Cool. I'm going to sacrifice this tapped desert. With Yuma's ability uh, and this Creosate Heath desert going into the graveyard, I'll go ahead and draw a card and I will make a third plant warrior. Yeah, I'm going to throw the Mancer under the Yuma bus and take eight. Excellent. I did damage. Yeah. I did it. And that was for my gutter. I'll pass. I'm scared of like everyone. Like I'm also still scared of, of Bobby. Like I know mm -hmm. this is the first time you've done anything, but like you could just <laughs> kill someone next turn. Just a nice overrun effect and you're done. I hate it. Okay. I'm going to start with a Reaver Cleaver. Oh, yes. One of the upgrades of the deck. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one, and it has trample. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, I get to create that many treasure tokens. And we're going to equip that to the Olivia. I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be scared, but I am way too hyped. <laughs> yeah, I am concerned. And we're going to go to combat. Olivia to Veggie. Rankle to Airball. Yeah, nothing here. Ah, uh, you can't block it. Excellent. I'm going to have a couple of triggers. Olivia had two Outlaws deal combat damage, so we go to four. Reaver Cleaver will give me an additional four, so I'm going to go to eight treasures. The treasures I'm getting from this Reaver Cleaver are huge and definitely helping me considering I've been so short on mana for this whole game. I'm going to gain four life uh, from the Olivia's lifelink, and I have a Rankle Trigger. Which ones do I want to do? Making you guys lose creatures doesn't help. Making you discard doesn't help because I have the least number of cards. So we're all going to gain a life and draw. That's the only thing we're going to do. Lose a life and draw, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Lose a life and draw. I'm going to sack two for a Racto Signet. And then I'm going to sack four more and tap Signet. We're going to play a Marshland Bloodcaster. A 3-5 with flying that says I can pay two rather than pay the mana to cast the next spell that I cast and I pay life equal to its mana value. Pass. Yeah, I'm thinking about this too much. I'm going to pay four mana for a culling ritual. Destroy oh. each non-land permanent with value two or less and I add black or green for each destroyed this way. I'll sack my treasures so you don't get anything. I'll float two mana, That's sir. That's a great idea. So I will get th three plants, uh, a thunderclap drake, a signet, mm -hmm. and none of my stuff. Beautiful. So I will make five mana, and I think I'm just going to use that immediately for a thieving amalgam. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, I manifest the top card of that player's library. And whenever a creature I control but don't own dies, its owner loses two life and I gain two life. What's with you and weird monkeys? Uh, look, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> it feels right, you know? There's, so, there's some sort of a connection spiritually. <laughs> I'm going to send Gonti and Fallen Shinobi at Airball and Grazalax at Bobby. So if Gonti cadets, then you're just going to have the ability to kill Stella anyway. So I think Stella's going to jump under the Gonti bus. Okay. We got our jump. All right. That's our jump. So the Fallen Shinobi is the only thing that makes it through. My stuff lives. So, Airball, I'd like the top two cards of your library while I draw this one card. Two cards for Fallen Shinobi and one for the Ganti Trigger. Uh, so, the first two I can play for free. Okay. So, let's see what those are. That is... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> those I can play uh, for free this turn, and then I get one more. This one is from Ganti's Trigger. Uh, it's face down. I still have to pay mana for this one. I'll play the Jessica's Will. Ew. Uh, uh, who has the most cards in their hand? Ow. Oh, eight. All right, I'm going to make eight red mana and exile the top three. Land, land, and a brain stealer dragon. Eight mana. Thank you much, Lee. Exiled, right? Uh, no. Yeah, I think I've got to cast the big score to make treasures. So I will discard uh, this swamp. And draw two and make two treasures. I want to play this cool brain sealer dragon. So I'll spend uh, a treasure and this exotic orchard and five. 
It's a 6 6 flyer at my end step. I exile the top card of each opponent's library. I can play those for as long as they re remain exiled. And if I play one of those, I can spend mana of any color. And when a non land permanent an opponent owns enters the battlefield under my control, they lose life equal to its cost. So let's make somebody do that thing. I will sack this treasure, spend one for a midnight clock. <laughs> Thanks, Airball. You got it. It makes mana, and if I pump a bunch of mana into it or a bunch of upkeeps into it, uh, then it will shuffle my hand graveyard back in and I draw a new seven. But you will lose three life. Sure. Yeah, I might as well use this final two mana uh, and tap the midnight clock itself just to put a counter on it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There we go. <laughs> okay, I will pass to my end step. Uh, everybody give me the top card of your library. I've had enough of Face you. Face up. Ooh, some removal, a land, and uh, and a board wipe. Excellent. Well, we're going to keep all those right there. Okay, uh, I will pass the turn. And then have two triggers to your upkeep. All right. <laughs> I will untap. All right, at your upkeep, I'm going to manifest the top card of your library and put a counter on Midnight Clock. Thank you. I probably shouldn't be complaining in this situation, but I am a commander player, so I will. Thieving Amalgam is a non-bow with Brainstealer Dragon. Even though I'm manifesting the top cards of my opponent's libraries, it is triggering Brainstealer Dragon, but dealing zero damage since their mana value is zero. Okay, I can have my turn now. <laughs> Hold on, let me check. Go ahead. Okay. All right, so when you draw... I <laughs> Veggie is tapped out, has two blockers, three, well, three, four, five blockers. Veggie's a problem. Can anyone help deal damage to the veggie problem? Oh, yes. Oh. oh. I have there is still a gutter snipe on board and a fire inscription that can be played this turn, so. All right. Let's I'm on, go. I'm on the anti veggie campaign. Yeah, <laughs> this is happening. So we're going to start by paying three, three red for fiery inscription. So I have one blue floating. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts me. And whenever I cast an incident or sorcery spell, fiery inscription deals two damage to each opponent. Gutter Snipe gets yeah. to carry the ring. <laughs> Gutter Snipe, the ring bearer. I feel like that's very fitting. You can find a lot of shiny things in the gutter. Speaking from personal That's how I got here. Experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, three spells and I, I'm dead. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with... We're going to use the one floating blue. Opt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good spell when Veggie needs to not hit three spells. Uh, trigger, trigger. Everyone take four, please. Oh, no. Ow, ow. I'm going to scry one and draw. Wait, no. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Uh. Bottom. I'll double by seven cards and pay one blue for treasure cruise. Mm. Draw three cards. But before I do, everyone take another four. Oh, no. You are going to you might kill two players. No, no, he's not. He's got two mana left. There's not possibly an instant or sorcery that he <laughs> could play for. Hopefully, it's just a counter spell. And now we're going to delve away six. Uh huh. And two blue. For a creature. Nope. The, the exact opposite. We're going to cast Dig Through Time. And everyone's going to take another four. Uh, uh, did, uh, damn, but did. You stopped to consider how cute my cactus is before you did that? How do you consider That's fair. Take it back. You know what? It hadn't occurred to me. <laughs> I'm dead now. Oh, no. <laughs> Veggie had to die there, and I don't feel bad about it, but I do feel bad about having to kill Bobby Christine because I feel like having Bobby at the table would distract Nerd Girl long enough to let me set up my threats. Uh, dig through time. I'll look at the top seven and put two in my hand and the rest on the bottom. <laughs> but now you're tapped out? I'm tapped out. Oh, that's a good sign. I've, I might be more in this than I thought. And that's all the mana I have this turn. I think Gutter Snipe is going to stay home, and I will go to my end step and discard to hand size. With the two of them in, I thought I was like super dead, but against you, I think I might actually have a chance. I'm going to start with a Demolition Field. I can tap it for colorless, or I can use it to destroy a non-basic, and then me and that player will get another land. All right. A Feed the Swarm on Ooh. the Fiery Inscription. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll take three. Ouch, but it's got to go. Bold. I will get a crime counter onto the bandit's hall because I committed a crime <laughs> by touching your stuff. We're going to pay three, and I'm going to cast a shiny impetus, but on my own creature. 
It's gonna give plus two, plus two, and whenever enchant creature attacks, I get to make a treasure. But that paired with the Reaver Cleaver means a lot of treasures. Yep. There is nothing to do it, but to just go in. Uh, so this is going to be four, five, six, uh, plus six, that's 12 damage total. Uh, then I can't do anything. I'll take 12, six commander, and a further six. So I've got a couple of triggers. With that combat, I'll get a total of eight treasures um, from Olivia, the Cleaver, and the Impetus. And then we've got some life gain. I'll gain six. Uh, we're also going to have uh, a Rankle trigger. And I think I need to be a little safe. Everybody sacrifice a creature because I don't want that ring tempt. Brutal. And now do I think the card will help me more or you more? I think you have not that much land, so I'm going to have us also lose a life and draw a card. There goes gutter snipe. Brutal. And then we each lose a life, draw a card. Tap one and a treasure to cast. Mist Meadow Skulk, a 1-1 one, one with lifelink and protection from mana value three or greater. <laughs> A strange little man. <laughs> good old, good old Lorwyn <laughs> and their normal, very normal cards. Uh, I think the only thing that really kills me is a board clear, so I'm going to try to get ahead of it. I will sack five more treasures wow. to go to two treasures total, and I'll put two counters on all of my creatures. I don't love sacking all of my treasures here post-combat, but Airball's deck can deal some damage, so maybe the extra two counters on all my creatures will save some of them, and then I will... Pass the turn. All right. Hope, hope that's good. Look at that barren, barren board of yours. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I can come back from that. All right, we're going to start by paying two for a Ledger Shredder. It's a 1-3 flyer. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Ledger Shredder connives. This isn't standard. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. yeah, when, when an airball says, I get to do a cool thing, it means he plays, <laughs> he plays <laughs> constructed cards. <laughs> Well, how's this for another constructed card? I'm going to pay one, and I'm going to cast Brainstorm. Eventually, I'm going to draw three and then put two cards on top of my library in any order. But first, we're going to connive the Ledger Shredder. And I'm going to discard a Niv-Mizzet Perun no, to Ledger that, Shredder. That is not good. Ledger Shredder's going to get a counter. And with Brainstorm still on the stack, I'm going to pay four to cast Reenact the Crime. Whoa. Exile target non-land card in a graveyard that was put there this turn. Copy it. You can cast the copy without paying its mana cost. No. <laughs> Tar non land. Target no. and you miss it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you heard her. I guess not. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, good game, everybody. <laughs> Fine. So Niv Mizzet's going to come back. Niv Mizzet says the spell can't be countered. It's a 5-5 five five flyer. Whenever you draw a card, deals one damage to any target. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Now... We still have Brainstorm on the stack, so I'm going to draw three and then put two cards on top of my library. That's going to give me three Niv-Mizzet triggers. Oh my gosh. And you have an X3? I do, but it's protection from things with higher mana value than wow. three. Okay. And that is six. <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot touch it, sir. I cannot believe how immediately relevant <laughs> protection from three over was. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Then all three of the triggers from Niv are going to go upstairs. One, two, three. These two will go on top from the brainstorm. I'm going to play a command tower as my land for turn. And we're going to pass to you. Yikes. Uh, I'm just going to pay three, crack my last two treasures to put an additional four uh, or go up to four counters on each of the creatures <laughs> that I've sick. got. We will go to combat. Yeah. And we're going to attack with the team. Uh, I will get a shiny impetus trigger. Sure. Um, Olivia's a 10-10, and then Rankle's a 7-7, seven, seven, and a 5-5. Five, five. I'll throw Niv under the Olivia bus, and I'll throw the Ledger Shredder under the Rankle bus, and those are my blocks. All right. You did. You take five and uh, five? Yeah. Yes. Olivia! <laughs> <laughs> gutter snipe, you have sniped my gutter. Many times, <laughs> many times this day. <laughs> Listen, I didn't even, I wasn't. <laughs> I was so 
so very close to having my board amplified by this cute little cactus baby. So, so, so close. I will say, at least it's very cool that Olivia had an ax in her hand because uh, a redhead had to win either way, right? Tales of Adventure is one of our biggest sponsors, and the best way to support us is by buying magic cards. You are gonna do this anyway, so why would you go anywhere else, especially when you get 5% off of your orders with our specialized code? TOA has an amazing selection of singles, and they even specialize in premium cards. So make sure you head on over to TOA with the link down below in the description and use code decked out at checkout for that 5% off and to support your favorite commander show. I'm just faking it for the camera, yeah. And wow, faking it for the camera. I can't even be mad about being dead. Getting Niv Mizzet into play in response to my own brainstorm is one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do in Magic, even if it left me dead on board. I could have drawn something to get out of it, but I didn't, and your girl punished me. I feel like that should be the like official motto of the show, kill veggie. <laughs> kill veggie already? I thought it was. <laughs> I've got it like branded on my underwear. I got official merch ready to go. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader in TCG accessories. We love their stuff and we know you will too. In fact, every single playmat, sleeve, or deck box featured on this show is an Ultimate Guard product. And we use Ultimate Guard to protect our own personal collections on a day-to-day -day basis. So make sure to use the link in the description to support our channel and treat yourself to some amazing upgrades. No, we try to be funny on this show. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't succeed. That's true. I try very hard. <laughs> I am very happy with the decision to minimally upgrade this deck. The synergy for Outlaws is fantastic. Just a couple of haymakers really made all the difference when it came to closing out this game. Also, special thank you to Airball for the assist. You're welcome. Moxfield is the best deck list site available. It has everything you need to customize, compare, and collaborate view and brew the way that works for you. Moxfield is the only way that we can track and share all of our spiciest builds here on the show and whatever Veggie is playing. Make sure to follow our Moxfield profile in the link in the description. <laughs> Faithless tootin'. <laughs> <laughs> Ranko Master Pranks, great example of fun for the whole family. Ranko. Fun for the whole family by Milton Bradley. Is he also part of a balanced breakfast or <laughs> like Your daily the most important meal of the day? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to play so many of my opponent's cards. Uh, well, I got to play so many of Airball's cards, and I guess I didn't keep a close enough eye on my own life total. But the upgrades that I added to the deck kept me as the bad guy for most of the game, which is exactly the way that I want to play Magic. We'd like to take a minute to thank our patrons. Without your support, these episodes wouldn't be possible. And thanks to patrons just like you, we're able to take Decked Out Weekly. This is our first episode in what will be a minimum of two months of weekly episodes. So if you would like to help keep us that way, make sure you head on over to our Patreon, try to unlock some exclusive perks, sign tokens, spell table games with us, even get your deck featured here on the show. And of course, you can always, always support us just by clicking like if you liked the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Uh, that's all we've got for you for today. We'll see you next time on Decked, Decked Out. Out.